Hallelujah. Give God a round of applause as we take our seats. Hallelujah. I was saying thank you when I was singing Imela because we don't see how important a mother is when they are present in our lives. Amen. So it's very rare for us to, to be able to, to say thank you to God for our parents every day. So I just felt that I should just thank God and just take this opportunity to say thank you, Jesus, for our parents. Thank you for our mothers. You know, some of us, our mothers are far, but there are people in this place that represent a mother for me. So I was just thanking God for that. Amen. Um, I want to take this moment um, to acknowledge the anointing of this house. Amen. I just want to thank God for TLT. I want to thank God for what he is doing in this ministry and what he's about to do in this ministry. Amen. I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the men of God. Um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to stand in this dangerous spot, dangerous place. It's not easy, but I thank you, men of God, for allowing me. I also want to acknowledge Makoko. She is more than an elder in this place. Um, yeah. Very spiritual woman. Carries a lot of spirituality in her. That um, if you can get time to just spend time with her. She doesn't talk a lot. But um, you will feel the difference once you are in her presence. Amen. So I acknowledge you, Ma. Thank you for being a part of our lives. Thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for loving us the way you love us. Thank you for correcting us when we are doing the wrong things. Um, personally, I love you so much. And my prayer is that God keeps you. That you live long. You live to see what you pray for for us in this place. Amen. I would have acknowledged every mother in this place one by one, but it, it would take time. Um, but I, I, I bless every mother in this place. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not going to take long. Um, can you please put for me Ephesians 6, um, verse 2 to 3. I believe today God wants to restore relationships between a mother and a child. There are people that are not really in good books with their mothers um, for reasons known best to them and to God. But it is my prayer that after today, whatever that your parent might have done or said to disappoint you, a mother is a mother. And I will tell you this, there's no parent that is wrong even when they are wrong. Yeah. They are human beings. They do make mistakes, but they can never be called out for their errors. So, know that whatever it is that happened... God is about to set you free and restore that relationship. Amen. So Ephesians 6, 2 to 3 says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. There is no other thing that you can do as a child of God to acquire 
living well and living a long life on this earth. There is not an amount of a seed that you can give that can give you long life except for honoring your father and your mother. But today, because it's a mother's day, I'm going to specifically talk about a mother. If you are a mother, you would understand that there's a lot of sacrifice that happens by being a mother. From the moment that you conceive, even the process of conception itself, it takes up a lot even in your system, in your body. Amen, mothers. It takes up a lot. There's a, a lot of emotional trauma, mental trauma, physical trauma, spiritual trauma that takes place during that period of conception. And I believe that during the pregnancy period is a moment where a woman, if she's prayerful, she's at her weakest point if she's pregnant. So there's a lot that mothers do for their child. There's a lot that they sacrifice. Whether or not they have something to give the child or they don't, but there's a lot that they give of themselves more than they can give physically. In our language, we say, I don't know what, like if you, if you shout at your mother, you run mad or something like that. I don't know what you say it in Zulu or in another language, but it's a saying that is said in, in our culture that if you beat your mother or shout at your mom, you, you run mad. I've never seen a situation where a person or a child to a mother that offends a father and life goes wrong. But I've seen situations where a child offends a mother, and life goes miserably wrong. There is something about a mother, present or not present in your life, that no one can take away from that mother a right that was given by God for your life, that no matter what that mother does in your life, that is bad in the eyes of God. She's always on the right place. I'm trying to soften someone's heart. Amen. Have you noticed in a home and the father dies, that loss is not really felt because of the presence of a mother. And between the two, a father and a mother, the only one person that can play both roles is a mother. If a, if a mother dies, you will know that there's no mother here. There is a grace that a mother was given by God. And no one can take away that grace. I'm even speaking and encouraging a mother in this place. Maybe you can feel like you have failed at some point in your life. But you cannot fail because you were not given the grace to fail by God. I'm not taking long. I'm about to finish. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> So there's nothing a mother can do wrong to a child that you can hold on to it for years and say, I will never speak to my mother or a person that represents a mother in your life. There's nothing. Let me tell you something. Even if your mother is a witch 
and you see her at night naked there, you have no right to disown your mother. Because someone once said, a very, very special person to my heart once said this, whilst he was teaching, that so if your mother is a witch, for real, because there are some people who can call their mothers witches. That person said, if she was a witch, why did she give birth to you and not eat you whilst you were a baby and vulnerable? You are now old. She took you to school. She fed you. She did everything that she did for you. How then is she a witch if you are still alive? Personally, I don't agree with any man of God who will tell you that your mother is a witch. Because the, 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 the anointing of God does not bring division. And the Bible is saying, this is the only commandment with a promise. That will give you, a, 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 that you may live well and you may have a long life. If you honor the person that is being said is a witch. A lot of people have been lied to. That this thing that's happening to you, it's your mother who did this thing. Yes, there might be proof that indeed something, and maybe you saw something, not even in your dream, but live. What I've understood through those processes is that most parents, especially African parents, especially the old ones, there are things that they did without knowing, thinking that they are protecting their children. But that th because if you go to a witch doctor, a witch doctor is not going to tell you that, you know, this, this stick I'm giving you will turn into a snake. They will never tell you that. They'll just tell you, take this stick, put it under the pill, and then your, all your kids will be protected. All the mother just wants is for the child or their, her children to be safe or to be successful. <laughs> Mothers are extraordinary human beings. I believe this is why they were not made at the same time with Adam. Women, we are a delicate breed to the extent that when God thought about creating us, when he looked on the ground to look for soil to make, to form us with, there was too much rocks and rough edges and what, what, And it's like, uh-uh, what I'm about to create right now does not need all these stones, these, these things, ants and what. And he put his mind to it. This is why we are the most smart people, not only intelligent, but even just generally neat. Because how we were formed... It was not from the ground. We were taken from the most delicate part of a human being. Amen. The rib. This thing, if one breaks, you cannot walk. With your spinal cord functioning, everything. This thing, if one breaks, you cannot stand up straight. One. I'm not talking about all of them. One. Try it. Yes, try it. I know they say don't try this at home, but this one, go and try it. <laughs> As someone who, who, who broke only one rib, they, they can't walk, they can't move straight. And we came from that delicate part of a person. Tell me, a rib is like somehow this big. How were we formed? 
there is a secret there that makes a mother special. No one, I'm not talking to only women, I'm talking to also men, sons that are in this place. If you want to unlock blessings or if you want to put speed in things that you want to achieve in life, you need to take care of that person called mother. Because this is the only person you are connected to through the umbilical cord. Yes, you came out of your father. You carry your father's DNA. But your father doesn't have any experience of how you started kicking. How you were turning. How you were moving. Lifting up the hand and she could feel this is an arm moving in my stomach. Your father doesn't have any experience of that. This person called a mother is the only person that has that experience. Which makes her extraordinary. And well equipped to know what you need. The advice that you need. The counseling that you need. I believe that a mother's prayer is more effective. Men of God, forgive me, but more than a pastor's. <laughs> me, I'm one person that if things are not okay, I call my mom. There are some of you here that I want God to bless you. So I called my mom and I gave her a list of names. Because my mother is very prayerful. And it's because also I have an understanding of what a mother's prayer can do. So if a mother's prayer can unlock so much in a child, what then will happen if a child is not in good books with his or her mother? If days go by without calling your mother, because every time you call your mother, the fact that she's happy to hear you, I was just thinking of, that is a blessing on its own. They don't need to pray or say a lot of things. Mr. Chimoy, even when your mom sends you a message, are you fine? That's a blessing. Never take that for granted. God had a reason why there had to be a woman. Why there had to be a mother. I believe Eve in the garden was not only a wife, but Adam also needed a mother in the garden. Even though he was formed directly from the hand of God and not birthed by a woman. But I believe that, he, that, that there was a thing missing. When God gave him everything to own everything on the earth, still something was missing. With all the authority over, over everything, something was missing. A woman, a mother. Women, have you ever heard this, wives? That a man always marries someone that looks like their mother. If you see my mother-in-law, ne? same height with me. <laughs> Both of us, we love to talk. We talk. Like when we're together, I don't know what happens today, but we talk a lot. And there are certain spiritual things that he tells me that exactly my mom, she's like this, spiritually. So there's something that was placed inside a person called a mother that nothing can even begin to compare to it. Nothing. So today, I just want someone to dig deep in their mind. It could be an aunt. It could be your mother biologically. It could be your grandma who raised you. If someone raised you and she's a woman, she's still a mother. And you owe them. 
your gratitude, your love, and your attention. Someone today needs to forgive someone called their mother some way. Like I said from the beginning that nothing else can unlock long life. People of God, you can come clean Mama Mfundi's house. You can do my hair. You can clean the church. You can wash Apostle's car. You can never get long life. It might be preserved, but it might not be long. Because there is a mother where honor is due. Whether she is a Sangoma, she doesn't believe in the God that you believe. In the eyes of God, she is your mother and you need to honor her. Not only do you need to honor her by respecting her, you need to look after them. There are people that don't even look after their parents in this place. And you wonder why now the man of God has laid his hand on your head. You are starting to become bold. Every other day. Every other day. Every other day. And you are losing hair. And you are wondering what kind of a man of God that prays for me but nothing happens. There is a woman called a mother. You are not honoring. You are not looking after. People of God, the first commandment with a promise. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. No, a son of man that he should confess. If he says it, he will do it. If he promises it, he will fulfill it. So if this is a promise, he's going to keep it. Only if you honor the person that honor is true. Someone is sitting here, you never said happy Mother's Day to anyone. Maybe your mom died or something, but there's always someone that represents a mother. You never send even just a message. There's a blessing that comes with just doing that. Even if she doesn't respond because she's also angry, you need to do your part as a child. Because in the presence of God, in the eyes of God, it doesn't change that they are a mother. Amen.